Prime Minister sets goal of maintaining economic growth. Prospects of Vietnam-Canada trade and investment relations. Hello and welcome to this edition of Bizline brought to you by VTV International. You're with me, Lina Pham. And as usual, we'll begin our program by reviewing the economic highlights over the past week. At the government's regular meeting on Wednesday, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc asked ministries and localities to strengthen reform in order to maintain economic growth for both this year and next year. Business confidence also needs to be strengthened. The Prime Minister said economic and financial policies this year will remain the same. This also means environmental tax on gasoline and the price of public services will be kept at the same level. The government will stabilize the Vietnam Dong U.S. dollars exchange rate at 2%. In addition, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc asked ministries to be active in reducing and cutting business requirements. The Vietnamese National Conference on Agricultural Promotion was held in Da Lạt City, Lâm Đồng Province on Monday. This is considered the largest ever conference on agriculture to seek for immediate as well as long-term solutions for the field. At the conference, many difficulties in agriculture were pointed out. These include land acquisition, production management, credit accessibility, inappropriate taxes and unstable market. Representatives of enterprises also voiced their opinions concerning human resource, investment and helping the businesses in the sector gain access to technology. According to the General Statistics Office, the trade balance so far this year is 3.1 billion US dollars, despite the import of goods worth 300 million US dollars in July. Export turnover was estimated at nearly 134 billion US dollars, up more than 15 percent over the same period last year. The United States is Vietnam's largest export market, followed by the EU and China. The European Commission or EC will impose a 3% quota on 23 Vietnamese steel products. If the import volume is over the 3% limit, they will be subject to an additional import tax of 25%. The Trade Remedies Authority of Vietnam said it would release data on exports to Europe to businesses and organizations to take appropriate and restrained measures. Meanwhile, many steel companies also announced reduced profits due to a sharp increase in cost of goods sold. According to the Ministry of Planning and Investment, Vietnam has so far this year attracted nearly 23 billion US dollars worth of FDI capital, an increase of 4.6% over the same period last year. Manufacturing remains the most attractive industry for foreign investors, having attracted almost 10 billion US dollars, accounting for nearly 42% of the total registered FDI capital. It was followed by real estate's total registered capital of 5.6 billion US dollars, while wholesale and retail sales came in third with a total registered capital of some 1.7 billion US dollars. Ten categories of support for developing Hanoi's startup ecosystem were approved on Monday. This memorandum of understanding with many initiatives was introduced at the Hanoi 4.0 workshop with the hope of creating a unique mechanism for the city to build a startup ecosystem. The main focus is on reviewing startup supporting facilities, promoting innovative startups and developing incentives for investment. And that's it for our review of the economic highlights over the past week. Up next in our crosstalk, we'll talk about the Vietnam-Canada trade and investment relations. Twenty eighteen marks the forty-fifth anniversary of diplomatic ties between Vietnam and Canada. For the past 45 years, the two countries have experienced significant results in trade and investment partnership. 
especially with the establishment of the comprehensive partnership between the two nations, as well as the signing of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, in which Vietnam and Canada are members. More opportunities are waiting ahead. In this episode of BizLine, we'll take a deeper discussion on the development and future prospects of trade and investment relations between the two countries. But first, let's review some significant results in trade and investment cooperation over the past 45 years. Vietnam and Canada established bilateral diplomatic relations on August 21, 1973. One of the most significant milestones in the two countries' relationship was the establishment of the Comprehensive Partnership during Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's visit to Vietnam in November last year. During the past 45 years, Vietnam and Canada have been promoting economic ties with notable results. Two-way trade turnover reached 3.52 billion US dollars in 2017, an increase of 15.3 percent against 2016, according to Vietnam General Customs. In addition, in 2017, Canada was among the 24 largest trading partners out of 200 countries and territories which have trading relations with Vietnam. On the other hand, Vietnam ranked fifth in Asia in terms of the largest trade turnover with Canada last year, according to Vietnam's Ministry of Industry and Trade. In terms of investment, Canada was the 26th biggest investor in Vietnam in 2017, with total registered capital of over 45 million US dollars. In order to delve into the topic, we've invited to our studio today Ambassador Ping Kitney Khan, uh, Ambassador of Canada to Vietnam. Thank you very much for joining our Bisline program today. It's my pleasure, Sing Jiao. The relationship between Vietnam and Canada has been set up to new level, especially uh, with the comprehensive partnership. So how has Canada positioned Vietnam uh, as a partner in Southeast Asia? As you mentioned, Vietnam and Canada are now in a comprehensive partnership. We have been uh, formal diplomatic partners for 45 years, but I must say that even before the establishment of formal relationship in 1973, Canada was already uh, involved with relations, including our role in the International uh, Control Commission. So it's a long history of that, and we're very excited because the bilateral relationship is certainly entering into new height. And the comprehensive partnership really is just a uh, extension of what we have already been doing in the diplomatic, uh, political, and commercial sphere. And that means expanding it to include uh, science and innovation, to include defense and security, um, as well as strengthening cultural innovation and other people-to-people -people ties. So I think we're building on a very strong foundation and we're looking really forward to uh, fully leveraging the potential that exists for both countries and both economies. How would you describe the trade relation with Vietnam in recent years? Well, Vietnam is Canada's largest uh, bilateral trading partner. It has been since 2015. And uh, last year, the bilateral merchandise trade reached $6.14 billion. The uh, trade surplus is very much in Vietnam's favor. And, and that is great because it's an indication of the vibrancy between the two countries. I think, though, the, the number, as uh, encouraging as it is, does not show the full picture because the majority of Canada's export into Vietnam is in the agricultural and agri-food sector uh, with some uh, industrial machinery as well as metals and mineral. But we really think that uh, as we grow the agriculture and agri-food uh, sector, and there we think we have a lot to offer the, uh, the growing uh, Vietnamese consumer, both in terms of quality and food safety. As you have mentioned, Vietnam is a big trade partner of Canada in Asia. So uh, what kind of shifts in terms of trade policy uh, that Canada has made in order to foster the trade relations with Vietnam? Well, Canada is not just a, uh, a trade partner with Vietnam. We're also partners in many multilateral forum. Uh, we're both members of the Francophonie. We share that, uh, that part of the agriculture identity. Uh, we're also, of course, a member of the UN and, of course, APEC, as well as with the uh, ASEAN Regional Forum. With the CPTPP, 
uh, being sign of which Canada and Vietnam are members, this, I think, opened a whole new uh, opportunity that we're very excited about, both for Canadian companies, but also for Canadian companies to look into exploring the, now we hope, a more level playing field in Vietnam, uh, more transparency, because obviously uh, Canadian companies are always looking to diversify. We are a, a Pacific nation, and uh, we see very much that the Asia with the growth and Vietnam leading with uh, 6.8 plus percent per year growth is well positioned to really, I think, getting into uh, cooperation with Canada. This company is preparing for a strategic modernization process to welcome the CPTPP and expects to increase its exports to CPTPP markets, including Canada. Experts say that Canada is among the most promising markets for Vietnam's textile industry, with large market share waiting ahead. Hiện nay thì chúng ta đang gần như có thị phần rất nhỏ ở Canada. Trong khi đó, cái thị trường này dùng tới một chỉ chục tỷ đô la cái hàng hóa dệt may. Vì thế cải thiện được thị phần ở đây thì có thể đem thêm về cho dệt may Việt Nam hàng tỷ đô la kim ngạch. Along with garment and textile, forestry sector is said to enjoy great benefits from the CPTPP. According to the Vietnam Timber and Forest Products Association, Vietnam's wood product exports to Canada in the first half of this year reached about 87 million US dollars. This figure is relatively small compared to the potential. However, it indicates an increase since 2017 due to positive expectations for the CPTPP. Canada trước đây rất ít, một năm xuất khẩu Canada cỡ vào khoảng độ chưa đến 100 triệu. Năm 2019 đã ký một hợp đồng là cỡ vào khoảng 2 300 triệu. Meanwhile, wood imports from Canada to Vietnam is still modest. It is expected that the imports will increase in the coming time to serve production demand of Vietnam for exports. Ngành gỗ của Việt Nam đang cần rất nhiều nguyên liệu để có thể chế tạo ra các sản phẩm để xuất khẩu đi các nước trong cái bối cảnh hiện nay khi mà các nước đều yêu cầu các tổ chức quốc tế yêu cầu chúng ta phải sử dụng gỗ hợp pháp, gỗ sạch thì tôi nghĩ Canada sẽ là một cái nguồn cung ứng gỗ tin cậy dồi dào để đáp ứng cái nhu cầu chế biến đồ gỗ của cái ngành công nghiệp gỗ Việt Nam. In addition, seafood exports from Vietnam to Canada is also promising, especially stream exports. The National Agroforestry Fisheries Quality Assurance Department says that Canada has strict requirements on seafood products. Therefore, entering the Canadian market will have Vietnamese seafood products access other difficult markets more easily. What potential opportunities that the CT, uh, CPTPP will bring about in terms of trade uh, for between Vietnam and Canada? Well, as a first step, what we do in Canada is when a, a new trade agreement has been signed, uh, is we would then do a, a consultation and also um, discussion with the private sector to uh, lay out for them the opportunity that comes up. We have done some preliminary analysis. We think that, of course, in the established sector that I already mentioned in agriculture and agri-food, um, the Canadian company would be very well positioned with its expertise because there's also value-added agricultural technology that they could also introduce to, uh, to, to Vietnam. Um, I mentioned in the uh, high-tech because I know that's an area that Vietnam is interested in exploring. So we do have some success to build on, such as in the uh, flight simulation area. The CAE, a Canadian company, has uh, provided flight simulator to uh, Vietnam Airline that will allow Vietnam to train pilots on that fly Airbus and Boeing. Uh, this means that Vietnam Airline would not need to uh, fly its pilot elsewhere for the training and to do it in, in, uh, on site. And uh, that was not only a business advantage, it would also create the capacity as well in, in, in Vietnam and perhaps build it up as a, a regional uh, training hub. Are there still any uh, further steps uh, to help promote trade and products? Of oh, the absolutely, two countries? absolutely. I think there's always room to help promote. We are far apart. Uh, there's no getting around the fact that uh, we are geographically very distant, even though we share some of the uh, very similar. Um, experiences in terms of the, the economy being comprised mainly of SMEs. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. you know, the majority of Canadian uh, economy are made up of, of uh, SMEs, so we do share that similarity. But beyond that, we do have very different legal framework, as well as I think the, uh, the entrepreneurial culture. The, the understanding, of, as I mentioned before, for, for business people, they need to have that certainty. They need to have a level of understanding that their um, trading relationship or their investments will be uh, protected and will, be, uh, will prosper. So I do think that the level of understanding on both sides can do with further deepening and that means that it's not just uh, sufficient to have the business people start talking to each other. I think we still have a role to play in uh, bringing attention to um, associations who can uh, disseminate the, uh, the information. And of course, the, uh, the visits by a Vietnamese delegation, a business delegation or otherwise, will also have a role to play in highlighting some of the, the information that might, not be, that might not be known in Canada, just because of the fact that the Vietnamese market is still very much in the nascent stage uh, back in Canada. According to Vietnam's trade counselor in Canada, Vietnam's exports to Canada accounts for only 1% of total import demand of this market. In order to boost Vietnam's exports to Canada, the Vietnamese Trade Office in Canada has worked with Canada's Trade Facilitation Office to implement projects helping Vietnamese firms make inroads into the market. Besides, the Ministry of Industry and Trade has directed trade offices and relevant units to apply measures to boost exports of Vietnamese key products to Canada. Apart from long-term strategies, the ministry also advises business to make use of commitments and incentives from free trade agreements, such as the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP, to promote exports to Canada. In terms of investment, what sector are catching the attention of Canadian investors? The, our investors to date have been in a wide variety of sectors. And um, some of the longer established uh, company, that we have um, two Canadian life insurance companies, Sun Life and Manulife, who are global leaders. They're both uh, present in, uh, in Vietnam. We also have a Canadian um, food um, packaging company set up in, um, in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City area. But it's very diverse, and I think one of the reasons is because until we uh, expand and step up the, the business exchanges and understanding, the, the kind of business that happened was, uh, could also be contributed to the fact that Canada does have a large Vietnamese community um, uh, in, in, in our country, um, Canadians of Vietnamese origin. Mm -hmm. So I believe we're now reaching close to 250,000 um, Vietnamese Canadian who are contributing to the, to the growth of our society and economy. And they have also served, I think, to, to, uh, to foster the, uh, the, the trading and investment relations. But because these are done sometimes by uh, personal connections, it's been very diverse. We have had uh, in, in, in all the different area, whether it's retail, whether it's restaurant, whether it's in the, uh, again, manufacturing or in services industry like uh, life insurances. How do you assess the business environment in Vietnam? The business environment in Vietnam is, of course, very vibrant. I find that the, the companies are very, on, the individuals are very entrepreneurial. Um, the, the challenge for um, not just Canadian, but I think for many foreign uh, com companies has to be the language barrier. So that is always the first step, is you need to communicate in order to get into discussion. I understand that the government of Vietnam is committed to simplifying and uh, streamlining the administrative process. That's always a welcoming news. And uh, I really hope that that will continue because that's exactly the, the kind of uh, message that uh, foreign companies likes to hear. Uh, less red tapes, uh, less um, um, less opacity, you know, more transparency, more clarity of what they can expect, and of course a, uh, a rule-based uh, order that they can also count on and easy for them to understand. 
During the visit of Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc to Canada in June, he expressed his belief that there would be a new wave of investment from Canada to Vietnam. So what's your thought on this? We were very pleased that uh, Prime Minister Phuc was able to join the G7 uh, leaders outreach session as part of the, uh, his, his trip. There's also a business component. I understand there was a, a very uh, successful business forum where the uh, Vietnamese delegation was able to meet with uh, Canadian companies and have good discussion. And again, as I mentioned, the information, the awareness is uh, half the battle. So now with that awareness, I think it's very important then to leverage the opportunity to make sure that the Canadian companies who are now uh, interested and intrigued by the opportunity in the Vietnamese market will have a favorable first visit, first impression. Um, because for many of our companies, as I mentioned, because many of them are SMEs, um, they would come to a market, but if they don't receive a, um, a favorable first, uh, first uh, investigation, it might be difficult to convince them to come back again. This Canadian company has been in the Vietnamese market for eight years. It provides architecture, interior design, planning, landscape and other consulting services. It is now aiming to expand the business and explore more market segments to fully tap into potential opportunities. Right now, there's kind of booming in terms of uh, hospitality projects. There's a lot of tourism you know, development, a lot of hotels. So we, we're trying to, to meet that target, uh, you know, to really bring in our design ex expertise for that, uh, for that special uh, market. According to the Foreign Investment Agency under the Ministry of Planning and Investment, Canada has invested about 5.12 billion US dollars in Vietnam with 168 projects. Some Canadian enterprises explain that Vietnam is a potential market for making investments thanks to its high economic growth rate and favorable business environment. The Vietnamese uh, business market is one of the leading markets in uh, Southeast Asia. We see a lot of growth, a lot of, a lot of potential here in Vietnam. And, uh, we're, we're, we're quite positive, we're looking forward to the next few years and so much so we're, we're expanding our office. Since Doi uh, Mai, you know, almost 30 years ago, this is the, the best time if ever. Uh, you know, Vietnam continues to open its economy. Uh, more and more companies are going to Vietnam, investing in Vietnam. Um, the government are making policies that are more and more open for FDI investment. Um, and you know everyone is looking at Vietnam as the next truly tiger in, in, in Asia. According to the Canada Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam, agri-food, ICT and education are among the most promising sectors for Canadian companies to invest in Vietnam. Along with pouring the money into Vietnam, some Canadian enterprises have also transferred the technologies to local partners. Canadian and Vietnamese enterprises also signed contract on technology transfer. So uh, what prospects can we expect to see in technology transfer in the coming time? Well, we really hope the, the parties uh, who are signatory to the, to the agreement will have an opportunity to uh, take it to the next level. And that, I would think, would depend on the, the nature of the, of the exchange that they want to engage into. We are, uh, as I mentioned, we are very much uh, a country that values innovation as well as to uh, encourage the, uh, the entrepreneurship, the creativity within our SME community. So in the technology transfer, it's not just the, the know-how itself, but I think with that also comes a relationship. So it is the first step in the taking it beyond just the, the trading, um, trading um, partner that we would have is to have that uh, transfer of knowledge. But I think also more importantly, the transfer of uh, trust in such a relationship. In your opinion, what can be done to attract more investors from Canada to Vietnam and what are their expectations when entering Vietnam? The government of Vietnam has already made uh, very clear its commitment to, uh, to attract foreign direct investment and is taking steps to streamline the administrative process. 
but beyond the administrative process, I think business thrives on, of course, the, the, uh, the accompanying institutional structure, and that means that it needs a, a working banking system, you know, the supply chain, if it's to do with the manufacturing area, has to be there as well. So there's a lot of uh, capacity building as well as the institutional capacity that has to be in place to allow um, further um, advancement of, of, uh, of an investment or a trading relationship. And in that area, um, we, the government of Canada, is not only just looking at the, the, on the trade and economic side, we have also been working through our development program in looking at the, uh, the banking regulatory and supervision uh, model, working on some projects to, to help uh, the Vietnamese banking system to meet its Basel II uh, obligation. So we hope that that's one more building block that will help to make the business environment more uh, compliant and more familiar to Canadian companies who are used to a system that's very much uh, rule-based and, and very transparent. And I think that's the big challenge because they, they are used to a system where things are perhaps more clearly laid out and uh, it's part of the, of course, the education and part of the uh, adaptation they will need to do when exploring a new market. But the more that the, the government can reduce some of the um, bottlenecks that, uh, that would allow the, uh, the private sector to develop, I think the more helpful it will be. Thank you very much, Ambassador Pinkini Khan, for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Trade and investment relations between Vietnam and Canada are set to be moving forwards. Both countries regard the other as an important partner in their integration process. During his visit to Canada in June this year, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc expressed his belief that there would be a new wave of investment from Canada to Vietnam and that two-way trade turnover between Vietnam and Canada would continue to increase. And that also wraps up this edition of Bizline. Thank you very much for watching. You can rewatch our program at vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Goodbye for now.